Hello and welcome to another episode of Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. I'm your host, Lee Zen. Today we're going to be talking about uh, having an API that we're going to build that lets us dynamically provision static websites. So kind of funny that we mix those two words together, but the idea is that I want to be able to have an API where I can call that API with some parameters. And when I do that, it's going to either provision or update a static website on my behalf. And how are we going to do that? We're actually going to use Pulumi in two ways today. We're going to A, use Pulumi to build that API, and we're going to use Pulumi to actually be the underlying function that that API executes uh, to provision and uh, update that website. Um, and that second part is going to be using uh, the new support we've added in Pulumi for automation API in Python. Uh, so I, I think I previously, in a previous Modern Infrastructure Wednesday episode, showed how to use Automation API in Node. Um, and this time, I'm going to be showing how to use Automation API in Python. Uh, and also, actually, kind of showing you, uh, recently I've done, I've done some videos uh, around uh, building Lambda functions as uh, container images, or using container images as Lambda functions, really. And uh, we're going to actually be mixing that in here uh, as well, which is kind of cool. So. Um, kind of showing you all these different concepts combined and at the end of it all we're going to have an API endpoint we can call uh, with some parameters and then every time we change those parameters we're either going to get a new website or we're going to end up updating an existing website. So let's let's jump right into it and see how that's all going to work. Um, so let's start with this JavaScript program. We're actually going to be mixing languages too. One of the cool things about Plumi if you're not familiar it's infrastructure as code, language of your choice, uh, so we support multiple languages, TypeScript, Python, Go, C Sharp, you know, the .NET languages. Um, starting with TypeScript here, and then we're actually going to jump into Python for our uh, second part of the second half of the application. So um, kind of we'll see how all, all, all that works together. On, on this side of things, um, I've already written everything because I wanted to debug some things and make sure everything worked. Uh, and actually ran into some interesting uh, little things here and there that I had to debug. So uh, um, I, I'll talk through those, but that actually saves us a lot of time in the video since uh, you don't have to watch me debug live. Um, so yeah, one of the things, for example, I forgot is that um, I ended up having the wrong uh, permissions here, so I had to kind of tweak the permissions a bunch of times. Uh, but anyways, uh, what are we doing? First, we're taking uh, this image that we're going to look at in a second, this app uh, image, and we're building it. And uh, that's so. This this is the Docker build context uh, app, and we're going to go look at what's the, in the Docker file and the actual uh, application there. So we build this image, and it gets pushed to ECR, so uh, Elastic Container Registry, uh, in AWS. And on top of that, uh, we're also going to create a role, and this is the a role that we can have our Lambda function assume. Uh, so you can see here we have this assume uh, role policy, which we we let Lambda assume this role. And we give this rule two permissions. We let it uh, have basic execution rule for Lambda, which basically means it can log to CloudWatch logs. And then we also give it uh, S3 full access. And the reason we give it S3 full access is we want this role to be able to create buckets, uh, put the objects into buckets, uh, update bucket policies, etc. So we just give it full access. And uh, obviously, you can scope things down if you want. You can change these policies. But for now, I'm just using these as, as uh, simple things. Um, and then we, we create a function. Um, one of the things I, I had early on is I had this set at 128 megabytes, which is a little bit too low to do a bunch of the things I want to do here because we end up uh, bringing in a lot of libraries. Um, so kind of I bumped this up to 1024. It actually doesn't take the 300 seconds, but I just give it a five minute timeout. And then so yeah, so what we do is we create this function where we wire up this image that we pushed earlier. So this is the, this is the image that we're wiring in right here. Uh, we give this function this role. And then uh, we also give it in the environment variables, my I've created a Pulumi access token in this stack as a secret. So actually, if you look in my YAML, you can see it's just this, this uh, encrypted value here. Um, and so that, that's what's going to go into the environment, in, into the environment so that, that this function can actually use this access token. And so um, what's going to happen on the back end, we're going to get into that in a second. You'll, you'll see why we need this access token in, in just one sec. Um, and then finally, uh, we create an API where we have this builder path uh, where you can post a value to that builder path. And um, the event handler is this function we called, uh, we created earlier called builder. 
And then finally, I export two values from the stack. One is the image in case I want to, uh, you know, do some debugging against the image. And uh, one is against the actual API uh, endpoint so that we can actually make curl uh, requests against it. So yeah, super simple. This is very similar to previous examples I've shown around uh, wiring up a container, uh, having that act as a Lambda function, uh, passing you know environment variables to that function, and also um, creating the right set of policies uh, for that function to execute. So so what is what is the actual application that this function is is, is what is you know what is what is this function? Let's take a look. Um, we have a couple things. First, we have a Docker file. This is what's going to define. Uh, the actual uh, uh, image that uh, is going to be deployed as our function. So we start with a base uh, image from, from AWS where uh, these are the Lambda images they, they have. Um, they have them for all the various Lambda runtimes. In this case, we're using Python. And uh, we set up and install the dependencies required for our program. So we have this. So we require the Pulumi CLI and the Pulumi AWS SDK. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, we install Pulumi. So the automation API, which I'll talk about in a second, uh, requires the Pulumi CLI. Uh, one of the things I ended up debugging is that uh, Lambda doesn't like running things uh, out of here, so I move it to a place it does like uh, and add it to the path. And then I create a home directory in a writable place because uh, the normal home directory is not writable. Uh, and so uh, you know we want to set Pulumi home, which Pulumi uses for uh, some, some workspace management stuff. Uh, so we set that up, and then we finally copy our actual program. And so now let's dig into this. So this actually uses, uh, actually we don't need this, uh, Automation API. Uh, you can see here we do this import for auto. And what are we doing? Uh, so we're actually using Pulumi in a programmatic way, uh, so not as a CLI invocation, to actually manage uh, state and to create infrastructure on someone's behalf. And so that's what's going to happen here. And so you can see here with this function called create static website bucket. And uh, this function does what it says, the function name, it it, uh, it creates a bucket. This is just like a normal Pulumi program you would run Pulumi up against, except here it's going to be executed as a Lambda function um, without ever, ever having to invoke the Pulumi CLI. So this is actually using Pulumi in a completely programmatic sense. So we talk about Pulumi programs, obviously they are just normal, uh, you know, programming language programs. But normally you would execute them, or not normally, but you know, typically, I guess, you know, in the past, you would execute them using pulling me up or some other pulling me CLI command. Here, they're getting completely executed within the context of some other larger scope program. So here, in the in the context of a lambda function, and so um, we have this function create static website. It creates a site bucket. Uh, it, it, this 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 function takes in a bucket name, a title, and a body. You can see we substitute that title and body into this into this content uh, template. And then we create this object, uh, and then we stick that in the bucket, and then we make sure that the bucket has a uh, uh, public permission so that people can actually go get those 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 uh, those things. And we export the website URL. Super simple Pulumi program, but what's cool is this is in line within the broader context of our Lambda function. So our Lambda function, all it's going to do, this is the Lambda handler, uh, and the Lambda function is going to, since this is wired up to API Gateway, is going to take the body from the API Gateway request. Uh, decode it since it's going to be base64 encoded and then we're going to take the bucket title and body values uh, from the request and we're going to go ahead and uh, instantiate a Pulumi stack so we're going to create uh, that stack you can see here create or select stack based on the stack name and the stack name is going to be based on uh, the actual project name and bucket name so here the project name I'm just hard coding to be website builder and the project name is actually, uh, the bucket name rather, is passed in as a parameter from, uh, from the API invocation. Uh, and then uh, we're gonna you know, pass in the site title and site body as well that we get from the actual API invocation. And so what's gonna end up happening is we're gonna create the stack and we're gonna run, we're gonna you know, install the plugin, we're gonna set config, these are again, kind of these are the analogs of what you might do on a CLI basis. Um, and then we're going to run stack up, which basically says go update the stack. Uh, and so we're going to see how this ends up working. And then you can see at the very end, we're going to return back um, the URL uh, to the uh, to the caller. So uh, I've already uh, gone ahead and actually deployed the stack already. Uh, you can see I was already playing around with it. So let's let's start over 
Um, you, you know, so let's let's do this. We're going to call the endpoint, um, but we'll 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 pass in some different parameters this time. Um, so you know, as we talked about earlier, uh, we give it, we can give it a bucket name. So we can say, for example, uh, you know, MIW episode demo, uh, and you know, we can give it, you know, the title hello MIW, and the body could be you know. Um, Automation API rocks. And so these are the parameters that are going to get passed uh, to this Lambda function. And this Lambda function is going to execute a Plumi program that's going to create the bucket, create the actual index.html file, put that in the bucket, and then create the bucket policy to let that be readable. And assuming all of that works, this should come back with a JSON blob that looks kind of like this um, with the actual uh, URL we can go use to visit that website. So here you can see everything got created, I can go visit this website. So let's go check that out. And you can see we got automation API rocks. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, why is this so different from, for example, if I, in this function, just created an S3 bucket, like if I just use the AWS SDK to create the S3 bucket and, and upload a file into that bucket, like that's not so different, right? But if we do a subsequent invocation of it, then you'll really see the difference. So let's let's keep the bucket name the same, but let's say we change the title to, you know, we decided we'd actually, you know, want to kind of change the title. We had a comma here, hello, comma, MIW, and then, you know, body, automation API rocks, uh, Lumi manages state. And so we have, a, we have a different string set of strings here. And if you think about what I just said, if we had used the AWS SDK, we would have had to keep track of like, does the bucket exist? Does the file exist? If it exists, like go replace that, you know, kind of have to do all this extra logic. Here, our program is super simple. We're using Pulumi the way you would typically use Pulumi where it's it's desired state. So, you know, the bucket is a desired state, like it already exists, it's not gonna go recreate it. And similarly, um, you know, this, this bucket policy is already the same. The bucket policy already exists. We don't have to go recreate it. We don't have to decide whether or not we need it or not. All we have to do is update the bucket object, which is what happened here. And if we go visit the site, you know, it didn't have to recreate the bucket, but it did update the values. Uh, here you can see, uh, let me actually bump the font size. It updated the values, uh, but didn't have to go recreate the bucket. And actually, we can see this. Uh, if we go to the Pulumi console in, in the SAS, um, in the MIW episode, if we look at the activity, so this is this is actually what I meant here by Pulumi manages the state. I'm using the SAS, and that's, oh, I totally forgot to mention. I, I, earlier I mentioned, oh, I, I pass in this Pulumi access token, and that's what's that's what it's needed so that when we when we go create the stack, it, it, by default, it's, it's interacting with the Pulumi, it's interacting with the Pulumi SAS to manage my state. Um, so you can see the first update, if we look at the set of changes here, you see what we expect. We create that bucket, we create the bucket object, and we create the bucket policy. And of course, we have this kind of meta stack object. But we create all these objects because the stack didn't exist yet. The second time I called, uh, the second time I invoked this API endpoint, uh, all that we updated was the bucket object. So I'm just going to let that sink in for a second. So we didn't have to encode any extra logic or anything. We just used Pulumi, you know, in a natural way. And then all we did is we wired that up to a Lambda function and had Lambda execute our Pulumi program. Um, and so, you know, there's all sorts of scenarios you can imagine doing here where you're automating infrastructure in a programmatic way that lets you, you know, on the fly, create, tear down, do whatever you want with your infrastructure in a, in a desired state model uh, in the context of a larger program. So, so really cool stuff. Um, and obviously, you know, I, I, can, I think uh, this, this hopefully gives you a, a good sense of how Automation API works. Uh, you can see kind of how easy it is to use Automation API uh, in Python um, uh, here. And, you know, there's not, not a whole lot of lines of code. Like all of this is just a typical Pulumi program, so not a lot of lines of code there. And then here I'm just doing some, you know, uh, munging of my data. And then really like this is the bulk of the program. This is, you know, hey, let's... Let's create a stack, um, you know, set up a stack. Let's install some plugins, set up some configuration, and then like run the Pulumi program. And that's that's the entirety of the of the Lambda function. Obviously, 
you know, we should probably add some more error handling here. Like if, if this throw, you know, if this has an error, we should return a different, you know, value. Like we should return like a 500 error with, you know, with the actual error and, and what the user can do. Or we, or we could add in automated error recovery handling in here. Um, and then also you could also, you could totally imagine that, you know, this post endpoint, you can imagine adding a, a delete endpoint to the same path or something like that, where we actually end up executing a similar program, but instead of running, you know, stack up, we, we end up running stack destroy. Um, and so, you know, you, you could you could have this whole thing wired up and then you could imagine finally like wiring up this API endpoint to, you know, some beautiful website where someone can go and, and uh, kind of like, you know, imagine in, in a company context or something like that, like, you know, you have some non-technical users who want to stand up their own websites, but you as the as the actual technical side of things, you, you want those managed in a, in a desired state model the way that Pulumi does. Well, you could do something like that and, and they can go, you know, people could go bonkers creating static websites uh, on their own or something like that. Anyway, uh, hopefully uh, you had fun watching this episode, got a good sense of all these things I just talked about tying together uh, in recent episodes, you know, having, um, having a container run as Lambda function and then kind of showing you how all that gets wired together, but then using automation API as the actual Lambda function uh, to provision our infrastructure. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, make sure if you haven't already to subscribe to Pulumi TV for more content from Pulumi. You know, we talk a lot about automation, infrastructure, infrastructure as code, fun topics uh, related to the cloud. And so yeah, make sure you subscribe to Pulumi TV. And also if you enjoyed this episode, we'd love to hear your comments and feedback uh, in the comments below, or just hit that like button at least so I know that uh, you enjoyed uh, today's episode. And hopefully we'll see you next week on Modern Infrastructure Wednesday.